Okay. Well, I'll, I'll just introduce Paul then. So Paul um, is Assistant Professor at the University of Toronto, uh, Dalla Lana School of Public Health. Um, I hope I pronounced that right. And uh, he's the pro Program Director of the, um, uh, the University's Occupational and Environmental Health Program. And he was recently uh, awarded uh, the school's uh, that, uh, Robin Badgley Award for Excellence in Teaching. He's also past president of the Occupational Hygiene Association of Ontario and uh, has been a um, principal investigator on the project about agate workers uh, in, in India. And that's what he's going to be talking about today. So if, I don't know if you've anything to add about yourself, Paul. Uh, otherwise, I'll pass over to you. So I'm on the title slide right now, and I'll just advance forward then to the next slide, uh, which says Grand Challenges Canada Grand Challenges Grant for those of you who uh, are doing it manually on your screens. I uh, just wanted to mention, yeah, that this was a research project jointly between University of Toronto and Workplace Health Without Borders. It also involved a third partner uh, on the ground in India, People's Training and Research Center. Um, I'll mention more about them later uh, because we're still working with them. It was a three-pronged approach, as uh, you might have heard already from Marianne, who presented to you in December. Uh, I won't be going over the same types of materials. I'll be focusing on the local exhaust ventilation aspect uh, that we've achieved thus far um, and are hoping to continue improvements on for the Agate project um, in India. So I'm going to move to the next slide which talks about the multi-step process. Uh, just as a reminder of what Marianne probably already told you if you were on the December meeting for WHWB UK, uh, is that the, the agate uh, minerals are undergo a number of processes in the cottage industries. Uh, horizontal grinders is one where it could be wet or dry. Vertical grinding, which is always done dry, at least in the operations that we've seen. There's ball milling for rough stones to get them into a semi-round state before they go to grinding. And then there are other operations that occur, again, mostly in cottage industries, in people's backyards, um, that we are considering as, as a low priority for local exhaust ventilation, LEV. Things like polishing, in some cases, uh, drilling or chipping because of the low amount of dust that were typically involved. So we didn't even look at those for any significant um, uh, need for local exhaust ventilation based on other work or other data that we had on silica levels in the air around those workers. Moving to the next slide, which is a green slide that talks about prior LEV controls, for those of you who are uh, going manually. Um, about 10 years ago, uh, between the National Institute for Occupational Health in India and um, charities like People's Training and Research Center that we worked with, there were some local exhaust systems deployed. And here's an example of one that we found that was still in operation. Um, it was a, uh, a vertical grinder, which you can see in the large picture in the lower right, with a very wide open metal hood around a very small wheel at this point. Uh, but that's a typical setup that would have been done a long time ago with um, uh, a, a three inch uh, diameter hose going to a half horsepower fan and then trying to collect and dump the dust away from the individual worker who would be manually holding the agate stones against that grinding wheel um, using that uh, piece of wood that you can see pictured there with the grooves cut into it. Um, this is not a very effective uh, means of controlling the dust because of the, uh, the basically the ineffective design of the hood and or the fan. Um, so when we measured it, uh, for instance, with um, a standard cyclone and X-ray diffraction on a PVC filter, uh, and then weighed the filter before we sent it off for quartz analysis for x-ray diffraction. We got 0.61 milligrams per cubic meter of respirable dust and 0.54 of that being quartz. Um, so it's, it's not meeting international standards, never mind you know, what uh, we would accept as, as probably the best standards for uh, controlling exposure to, to quartz dust uh, or any silica dust. Um, so that's why this is one of the incentives for continuing on with the project. So next slide um, uh, is a call entitled Technical Goals, for those of you manually ad advancing. Um, I mean, we ex accept the fact that, you know, it's, it's in India, it's cottage industry, people aren't going to want to spend a lot of money. People don't have a lot of power available, potentially, especially if they're working outside their homes and not in a factory setting. Uh, and we wanted things that were hopefully available locally so that, you know, if we, on a pilot scale at least, show that 
silica dust can be controlled, that there would be some incentive for them to ad adopt this and spread it out through the rest of the industry, which is still, um, you know, rather large, although it's not as large as it used to be 10, 20 years ago. So pictured there below is is a simple cutting operation, or you know, and all, very similar to some of the grinding operations we saw as well, where there is a, um, a an angle grinder being basically strapped down to a piece of wood, um, and again the worker manually holding a stone against it to either cut it or grind it. In this case, cutting, but grinding would be done very similarly in some cases. And again, as you can see, when we measured it, you know, uh, silica levels were extremely high in comparison to international exposure limits. A task-based sample that we took for perhaps an hour showed about 1.9 milligrams per cubic meter. Now, based on this kind of picture, which I didn't actually take, it was taken uh, prior to uh, my first visit to India, um, I worked on a system in my laboratory trying to, you know, clamber things together. So I'm at the next slide, which looks like a picture from of a fume hood with a, a setup uh, in front of it. Um, there is basically stuff that I could get at any home improvement store in Canada, which I hoped we could uh, and, uh, duplicate in India. So you know, there's uh, some um, uh, heating uh, duct, not an exhaust grill, but it's something that's usually used to deliver heat through a forced air gas system in Canada, connected to through a little bit of ductwork. Um, and then eventually into a commercially available cheap fan, low power, uh, around 200 cubic feet per minute. So, you know, hopefully something that we could get a reasonable capture velocity with. And in this case, I was just testing it, so I was dumping the dust into a fan, in, into a fume hood. Um, but I was using a 20 liter pail, um, which acted as two, two separate functions. One is to support the fan, knowing that uh, most of the time these operations are on the ground or on a uh, supported close to the ground and so you might be, need something to support the fan itself uh, and the hood uh, and also um, uh, I was using the pail just basically as a kind of a small settling chamber so the air enters in from left to right on that picture from a grinder that I strapped down into a laboratory apparatus um, and then uh, the air is drawn into a bucket with uh, some water to try and hopefully collect at least some of the dust and dump the rest of the dust um, out, in this case horizontally into a fume hood. With this I proved to myself at least that I could get the dust levels down from um, milligrams per cubic meter down to less than 0.05 milligrams per cubic meter just measured with a direct reading instrument, a TSI dust track, and I was exhausting lots of respirable dust into the fume hood so I know my settling chamber wasn't really working but at least I was uh, controlling worker exposure in theory if I could set up an apparatus like this in India. So this was my inspiration uh, for a little bit of a trial in my laboratory back here in Canada before the first trip to India um, that I undertook for this project. Um, and uh, if I'm moving to the next slide, which is entitled Trial Intervention Horizontal Wet Wheel. So this is showing a close-up of a, of a diamond wheel. Uh, so we call it a horizontal wheel if it's spinning in the horizontal direction with a vertical shaft. Um, and showing um, a custom hood that we had fabricated there. Um, uh, you'll see the rest of it on the next slide, but basically the worker is holding a, a stone against the diamond wheel. Um, this is a wet process, and you can see um, that little bit of tubing. It looks like Tigon tubing, but it's really medical intravenous tubing that they're using to drip water onto the wheel to try and control the dust themselves. That, that was done before we were there. Um, but we found that the levels were still high for silica, so we added on that very crappy looking tin uh, hood there uh, that was basically a twenty uh, sorry a four liter pail with the side cut out of it um, um, and then connected to to an exhaust system that we constructed with local materials, which I'll now point out by moving to the next slide, um, which is showing uh, the a blue bucket with the fan connected for those of you advancing manually um, so that was a, a cheap blue pail um, uh, and a locally purchased fan. I'll, I'll have the fan specs in a minute, but there's the, the fan curve on the right-hand side of that slide with some flexible ductwork um, connected to the hood, which is now shown on the, uh, the upper right of the, um, the picture. And the intent here, again, is to try and, you know, at least draw um, as much of the wet aerosol in this case with the silica dust in it away from the worker, um, you know, collect some of it if it's on the large size uh, in a bucket that's partially filled with water again, 
and then discharge the rest away from the worker, not necessarily controlling um, community exposure, but at least controlling worker exposure. Um, the next slide um, has on the right um, the results uh, of our silica measurements pre uh, the hood and after the local exhaust ventilation was uh, installed at the same location. Uh, the picture here looks a little bit different because uh, this is a picture I actually took on my third, vis third and final visit um, after um, had done the, uh, the intervention here installing the local exhaust system um, showing what, uh, what the system looked like after being installed for nine months. So just quickly on the results, um, the respirable dust just gravimetrically um, weighed on the filter after passing through a cyclone. Um, we got down from 0.8 milligrams per cubic meter to less than 0.33, none detected, uh, on a, on a one-hour task-based sample while the worker was um, uh, grinding, in this case. Uh, and uh, the quartz levels uh, changed from 0.53 milligrams per cubic meter to 0.09. You know, an acceptable, barely acceptable, at least an acceptable um, level of silica exposure um, for the worker. So the, the picture I put there because uh, Kambat, India, the, the village where we chose to do this because that's where the majority of the agate grinding, grinding um, takes place, um, is close to the coast and uh, presumably the salt water, um, you know, throwing off enough uh, chlorine in the air that, yeah, our system was showing a little bit of um, deterioration probably due to um, the fan not being as durable as it needs to be in, in a salt climate and the duct work was having to be patched up by the, wor uh, the workers because they had obviously at some point moved it around and, and you know got holes in it and started to replace the duct work but at least they were still using it so we were very happy that um, if they were we were expecting exposures to be reasonably well controlled. Um, another situation on a, a different type of system, a vertical grinder, um, at the, this picture shows three shots of the same system. Our, our first visit, we tried to use a cheap crude hood made by a local tinsmith out of, in this case, um, you know, uh, cans that were used for household oils that were sold in the village. Um, it wasn't particularly well designed in terms of its av available size and tight fitting around the grinder. In this case, okay. Sorry, so uh, if I'm on slide vertical grinder number one, crude cheap hood, um, just showing our first attempt at uh, installing a, uh, a hood over um, a vertical grinder. And on the lower left, you can see how the worker um, uses a basically a stick or a board to hold the stones against the wheel. Uh, the crude hood in this, in this case uh, was constructed just of very cheap local materials from, um, you know, purchased from household items. This was a, a can used for ghee or oil. Um, and then there were, it was adapted by a local tinsmith to connect to our local exhaust ventilation system, again, with the flexible duct and the fan to dump the, uh, the air away from the worker. Um, in this case, you see the fan specs on the lower right there. It was about 250 CFM forward curve blade fan, just commercially available off the shelf quarter horsepower, um, and it was under $100 in India. In this case, the, the hood being a little bit too open and the air not being enough for that type of uh, speed of a wheel, um, we were not achieving our uh, results that were acceptable. We were getting a reduction in exposure by uh, over half, but not good enough, obviously, to meet what we thought were acceptable standards for silica exposure. So moving on to the next slide, um, also shows a trial intervention vertical grinder number one, and it looks like a dust cloud being spewed out of the end of a pipe. That's the end of our exhaust system. So this was our, our other problem that we uh, found, is that um, the uh, LEV exhaust system produced, can produce lots of visible dust, uh, which frightened the workers, frankly, because they thought, you know, maybe we're getting the dust away from them, but uh, exposing their neighbors. And so the ambient exposures to silica are, are, were a concern that led us to, to think about other uh, interventions to deal with the dust control problem as well as the worker exposure problem. I'm uh, moving to the next slide, uh, which is entitled Revised Air Cleaning Device uh, Cyclone. There's a picture of my um, uh, back at my laboratory again, uh, crudely trying, trying to figure out what to do with the dust. And our first attempt was to use basically a homemade cyclone, assuming again that we could hopefully purchase these kinds of materials in India and get them to adopt an air cleaning device like a cyclone. 
So it's an eight inch diameter pail um, produced, uh, pr sold by Home Depot here um, with a traffic cone, at least the, the, the conical section of the traffic cone uh, cut out and installed in the, um, in the orange bucket and then using a second white bucket down below uh, to collect the, uh, the oversized dust. And oversized in this case, I was trying to get down to collect about five microns and larger. Um, with uh, a piece of uh, two by four inch square plastic going in, which is uh, actually part of a rain gutter kit that you can purchase again at a, a home improvement store here in Canada, um, and found that I needed to get a larger fan. Uh, the fan that I used here that um, was shown in the trials that I did in my laboratory um, was a three quarter horsepower fan, 3600 RPM, because we're on 60 hertz in Canada, um, and I was able to get 260 CFM, which is the closer to what I needed, I thought, for the hoods that we were going to deploy in India. Um, and it required a static pressure of uh, minus 4.7 inches to actually pull uh, that amount of air through that cyclone and a simple hood back in my lab. Um, so again, this was the, the model for what we wanted to take back and uh, deploy on our second round um, in India uh, for improved air cleaning as well as um, the, the hood improvements that I'll talk about in the next slide. Uh, we got it constructed out of metal in India because we had a contractor who um, worked with fans. Um, he didn't work with tin or, or plastic, unfortunately, but he did make it out of metal, and I'll show that on the next slide. So here's the the end of the, the setup we used um, for our our um, set of trials after this um, back in India. This is just showing the cyclone and the fan itself uh, connected to the bucket again for collection. Um, the uh, the uh, in the duct going in obviously would have been the four inch diameter that you can see the conical and in, uh, the round inlet going into the cyclone, um, and the fan mounted now on top of the cyclone with a, um, a cheap stand that we were able to get our contractor to build for, again, less than $150 Canadian in total for the whole setup that you're looking at there, excluding the fan. The fan was a couple of hundred, uh, sorry, $100 on top of that. And in this case, we were able to talk him into and try to get. Um, a larger fan that I thought would meet our specs, but it didn't when we trialed it. It was uh, only about 170 CFM um, pulling through the cyclone as shown here, for example. Um, but one of the issues being, of course, in India, they're dealing with 240 volts and 50 hertz, not 120 volts and 60 hertz like we are in Canada, so we couldn't duplicate the fans exactly, especially using a local contractor who was unsure of our international standards that we were trying to convey to him. Um, so I'm moving to the next slide, calling horizontal wheel number two, showing um, a another wet wheel. In this case, there is a small diameter diamond wheel in the center of that um, rubber tire there. Um, the, the workers use the rubber tire to um, collect the spray as it comes off from the wheel. As again, you can see the woman applying here a, a piece of um, agate to the wheel to um, uh, to reduce the size, uh, it's a grinder, and in this case, we um, we did have some success. Um, in this particular case, even though the hood looks rather awkward and large, um, with our and we're using a larger power fan, a three-quarter horsepower fan, we were able to get the uh, the quartz exposures down from three milligrams per cubic meter to 0.05 milligrams per cubic meter. So at least we have partial success, and we've demonstrated to them that uh, with a combination of wet. Um, grinding and local exhaust, you can really reduce the exposures. So it's a matter of now communicating this and hopefully getting others to adopt it or adapt our um, our hood here and use uh, in a manner that they find acceptable. I'm moving on to the next slide calling vert called vertical grinder for those of you advancing manually. Um, so in our final round where we still had grant money to go to India and work on it, we uh, did get some custom hoods done. Um, using a proper tinsmith at a town and about an hour away from Kambat connected to our new cyclone system. So here is a setup at a vertical grinder where I'm showing our setup there on the left with the three-quarter horsepower fan um, uh, pulling through a new custom hood. And the custom hood you can see better on the lower right picture um, where we, we did reduce the exposure, but unfortunately I wasn't there to supervise the installation and what... Uh, that hood you can see is barely covering half the wheel. It was intended to actually in, in, totally enclose the wheel, um, but to do that you needed to cut out the uh, uh, a slot on the sides of the hood to um, uh, 
uh, allow for the shaft, obviously, of the grinder, which uh, didn't get done uh, in my absence and my fault for having to leave India and um, get other people to follow up for me. So we didn't get the exposures down as much as we'd like, but we have um, uh, confidence that this kind of a hood would work well, and um, this would seem to be um, something that we can hopefully move forward with on a low-cost basis to at least demonstrate to others that this can be done uh, and achievable and get good exposure control um, um, with reasonably low-cost materials, although reasonable is defined by Western standards, not necessarily standards that they would follow in India. Uh, moving on to the next picture showing a horizontal grinder, which is the other uh, type of a system that produces a lot of dust, um, a dry horizontal grinder, so no water being dripped onto a wheel in this case, um, with our new setup um, and a a box type hood as positioned as you can see to the left of the grinding wheel when the grinding wheel being positioned on that low platform to the lower right of the picture um, and again showing our our new system where we had uh, used the cyclone to try and reduce the dust we we got it down you know by a factor of uh, four um, not perfect yet but again I wasn't there to uh, supervise the installation of the hood and uh, I'm looking at this picture saying the hood is positioned awfully far away from the wheel compared to what I intended when we when I originally had the tinsmith uh, uh, make up that box that uh, is acting as the hood there so with further improvements on uh, installation and coaching of the workers to make sure that they install it correctly each time. We're pretty confident we can get much lower exposures than even what we measured here, although we haven't proved it yet. Moving on to the next slide, just um, nearing the end of my little presentation here, hopefully I'm not taking up too much time. Um, uh, there's, this is the other very nasty operation that can occur, uh, a dry ball mill. This is a, a rather large operation here with two ball mills uh, connected together. Uh, or sorry, in the same room. Uh, thankfully, the ball mills are often used uh, in rooms by themselves where people, including families, don't actually occupy the space during the, the milling because the wooden slats on those rotating ball mills uh, does allow a lot of dust to escape intentionally as the stones are allowed to rub over each other to become very cr from a very crude chipped shape into a rounder shape. Um, and in fact, the, the measurements you see there where we measured adjacent to this room, not in this room at all, but adjacent to it in an occupied room, um, it was 36 milligrams per cubic meter of respirable dust and 17 milligrams per cubic meter of quartz um, uh, silica on a, um, on a short term, again, about a one hour sample that was collected while well, this room itself would be full of dust as the ball mill operates for a 24 to 36 hour period. So a terrible situation that needs to be uh, remedied, not only for people in the adjacent area, but also, uh, you know, afterwards, uh, somebody has to go in and clean up that room and remove the stones. And so a worker would be exposed um, unloading um, at, at the unloading stage of this operation. For this, we had uh, basically ended up with a general ventilation system thus far. Um, here we've uh, showing uh, one of our largest fans that we used, um, uh, 1.5 horsepower uh, motor fan, uh, just as a general ventilation for the entire room um, and through our cyclone to try and, and at least control people's exposure in the adjacent rooms of this house, and it was a house. Uh, we did get it down to um, acceptable levels of quartz, although there still was some dust in the air, um, total 0.51 milligrams per cubic meter of respirable dust, uh, again, in the adjacent room, not in the room where the actual ball mill is. Uh, and again, the, the concern is, if you look at the footprints on the picture on the right, again, uh, with a general exhaust system, of course, you can't achieve uh, total control within the room where the operation occurs, and somebody has to go in afterwards and sweep it up and clean it up um, as they uh, uh, do the unloading of the, uh, of the quartz um, stones that have been processed, and so there would be some short-term exposures. Um, and there's also still not perfect success with our cyclone um, with this type of operation, again, uh, if, uh, even with a large capacity, we were trying to get up to 250 or 300 CFM if we could through our systems. We wouldn't remove all of the respirable quartz. We would remove stuff around 5 microns and larger. So there still is um, some community exposures and some improvements to do to prove that uh, local exhaust um, can be useful to the people in India and uh, in the agate industry. Um, we still, um, even though our grant from Grand Challenges Canada is completed, we uh, we 
continue to work with funds raised through WHWB um, here in Canada to um, work remotely and therefore less uh, less expensively um, with people back in India to uh, customize some of the ventilation. Um, we're we're working on better dust collection systems. I'm thinking about, for instance, a wet cyclone system um, that could be constructed and uh, re- reproduced in India. Um, and uh, we're uh, using potentially some of the money that we've raised here to hire a local occupational hygiene consultant to validate the ro- results and also train the workers to make sure that they're using the hoods correctly um, in the future and um, that they understand the maintenance, especially uh, cleanup. Uh, they do have to uh, remove the dust from the cyclone uh, cyclones and or water buckets that are being collected uh, and to make sure that they don't uh, cause secondary exposures of dust uh, after that. So that's all I wanted to show you right now um, is what we've done so far um, and that the fact that this is an ongoing project and um, Again, just trying to demonstrate to the people of India um, in the agate industry that it can be done and and that you can achieve uh, much better silica exposure uh, controls than you than they have been using previously um, and if there's any um, I invite anybody uh, either during this presentation or afterwards if you um, if you don't have time now to talk is to send me an email or suggestions for you know what cheap local things you think might be achievable. Um, to um, help us think about new ideas um, for making improvements on dust control or local exhaust ventilation for these kinds of processes.